All right, guys, we interrupt this broadcast to bring you our winner from our last episode's OG Wheel $250 giveaway. So if you see your name on the screen, then check your DMs because we'll be contacting you soon to get your winnings. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time on Behind the Mask. Hi, friends. I am your host, Gabby Allen. Welcome to another episode of Behind hey, the Mask. Hi, Dr. William. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I've got coffee coursing through me. Yes, I've so got a lot too. Can you just answer that question as we start out? Mm -hmm. What is this? Because it's fantastic. It is fantastic. Um, my beverage of choice from Starbucks, it's a shaken iced espresso. I get it with a splash of almond milk. Mm -hmm. And with everything, I love cinnamon. So I add some cinnamon on there. And it's just very yummy. It's my new go-to. I've influenced you. I'm an influencer now. You are? And, it, you know, let me just say, guys, the first time I ordered this, he looked at me like I was crazy. I said, well, you I was asked gonna... me if I had a simple order, and I said an ice shaken you express. You said yes. And you, I got to, like, the third syllable, and you said, this is too well, much. Well, it was the word shaken. Shaken. That was... never, I didn't know Starbucks that, shook anything. That, that, was just so took like, you, oh, that took you too that far. That seems complicated. Shaken I'm was too sure complicated. I'm pretty sure I can't find the shaken button on the All right. app. But you did, shaking. and it's fantastic, and I appreciate it. You're welcome. And now we have matching drinks. Oh, uh, mine's finished. But yeah, yours is finished. So I'll get there. We'll get there. Well, guys, welcome. Today we're talking about more plastic surgery stuff, yes. of course. Mm -hmm. Today's focus is on the OG Faha. And Dr. William even designed his very own for recovery. So I know very little about a faha and what it is. I, s I saw one floating around here. Yeah, I'm going to bring that out in a minute. Yeah, I want to know what is a faha? Why do we need it? Why do they need it? Why is it important? And how can we get yours? So the, so uh, if we just start at the beginning, a faha is, um, it's, it's a garment. It's a compression garment. And it was really designed um, in Colombia. It's really kind of the birthplace of the faha. And it's used throughout South America. And you know, obviously in Miami, you have a huge... Latin influence in Miami, and it makes it such a rich cultural community, and it's it's why Miami is such a wonderful place to live. Mm -hmm. um, but it, so it was really designed to for women to wear under clothes, so it was a shaping garment, mm -hmm. kind of like a corset back in the day. You know, see those little you see those movies um, where they cinching up the corset, and yeah, things like that. So it, it was basically designed for that, but then. After liposuction, then people realized, oh, this is a good garment to wear after lipo. And that's why. So that wasn't even its original purpose. No. It was just shapewear that then became. Yeah, repurposed a for. Medical or recovery tool. Yeah, post operative uh, garment. And so there are, you know, lots and lots of Fajos that have, have been on the market and for years, and there's lots of them now. But none of them were were really designed, I would say, specifically for plastic surgery in mind. Mm -hmm. They were really just minor alterations to just the shapewear. And so I used Fajas for years now, putting them on patients after surgery. Although a little dirty secret is I don't help put the Fajas on because <laughs> it's really difficult to put a Faja on somebody who's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, no, you so, have people for that. <laughs> so we do have, uh, you know, kind of a group that comes in and helps to put the faha on. But it's really important. We have to put it on right after surgery. Okay. It, number one, uh, the number one reason for me is that it limits bleeding. And so if you imagine, like, let's say um, you have some laceration on your arm or something like that, and then it gets sewn up, you put a bandage on top. If there's any bleeding with that wound, you can open it up, you can stop the bleeding, or you can put pressure, that type of thing, to stop the bleeding. But with liposuction, we do just small little incisions and then operate all over the body. So there's potential for bleeding a lot more remote from where you can get access to it, and you would not want to 
use these little incisions to perform your liposuction, and then next thing you know, you're making some big incision incision to start stop bleeding. So what you do is we need compression. Pressure. You know, pressure. And so that's really the first and foremost reason for using a faha after liposuction is for pressure to limit bleeding. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, that's the number one reason. And then the, there's a whole bunch of other reasons and why a faha is so important. I mean, you have to wear a faha after you have surgery. It's, it, you couldn't have liposuction without it. For how long? Uh, three months. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three months. Okay. So, you know, I usually recommend six weeks, 24 hours a day, and then six weeks, 12 hours a day. That's a commitment. Yes. Wow. Yeah. It's a really important part of having liposuction or having a BBL. Do patients need more than one on hand? Because how often, you know, with yeah. the leaking and... Yeah. So I usually recommend patients have two Fahas okay. because... At the very beginning, it's very messy and the fluid's just coming out and there's blood tinge to it. And blood is like food coloring, <laughs> so it kind of a little bit goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And so when you take that off to wash it, then you put the other one on and so you yeah. just kind of alternate. But the Faha does a bunch of other things other than just stop bleeding. It, it, one of the important aspects of a Faha is for comfort. And it's sort of like if you bang your elbow and then you sort of hold it, you know, yes, you kind of hug yes. yourself like mm -hmm. that. Um, it's like the Faha's giving you a big hug. And so it, it, it's it's comforting. Oh, I don't um, need a boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> I you just, just get a Faha. You just get a Faha. Okay. You'll be good. It's like a self-hug all the time. Oh, done. <laughs> and especially if you're wearing it 24 hours a day. Then I definitely don't. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's comforting, it's comforting limits bleeding. It also helps to control the swelling because, mm -hmm. you know, after any operation, but in particular with liposuction, uh, you swell a lot. And so your body is, the faha is not going to prevent you from swelling, but it kind of can limit the swelling. Okay. The other thing that, that a faha does is, you know, when we do liposuction, you've got the layer of skin and you've got a layer of muscle. And we remove the fat in between. And then, so imagine it's like a, kind of a piece of Swiss cheese or something and mm -hmm. all the little holes are where the fat's gone. And then that has to compress down. So first of all, it swells, there's fluid. So the faha will help to keep the skin more in contact with the underlying muscle and fascia. So it helps the body to kind of help the skin redrape. It sort of supports it while it's redraping. So um, the faha is an important part of also just getting that desired shape. Yeah, it, it helps health. the shape. And that that's actually really where um, my idea for creating my own faha came mm -hmm. in because I do liposuction a little bit differently in terms of liposuction through the key area, for example, to get the OG line. So we used a lot of fahas over the years, different materials, different shapes, and all this type of stuff. But I never could really find something that was doing exactly what I wanted it to do in terms of where I wanted the pressure. Because you have to remember, like, a lot of these fahas were just made out of one kind of standard material with sort of uniform compression throughout. But if you look at a BBL, we want more compression where you've had the liposuction, where we want the skin to redrape, where we need the pressure for the swelling, where we need the pressure for the bleeding. We want that to be a higher pressure area, but where we've added fat to the butt and to the hips and to the legs, we want less pressure because putting pressure on that fat that we've just grafted in there can be too much pressure and it can kill the fat. Mm -hmm. And so you can lose your result if you're having too much pressure. So. Then, and the other thing is, you know, it always comes back to the key area for me. That's an area where I want a lot of compression. So I want more compression there because that really rounds the top. That's a critical, it's a key area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't take a lot of imagination yeah. for me to come up with that name. But it's key because we want a lot of pressure in that area because that really rounds. It's the transition point between the concave OG and the convex OG. So and that's you, what gives it that. That gives it the look. The whole OG, the point of the OG, what the OG is. It's yeah. giving that shape. So in that area, I wanted more compression. So 
The long and short of it is I didn't really find any type of faha that was doing what I wanted it to do. Because you have to kind of remember, like, we don't just all of a sudden willy-nilly come up with how we do a BBL. I mean, this takes years of practice and experience and, you know. Trial and error. Trial and error. I mean, you look at your results. Um, you look at your own afters. You, you spend, and, I, and it's probably something that patients don't, don't know or realize. Like, as plastic surgeons, we will be in, like, our own little place on a Sunday night looking at before and after photos. And you, you really learn a lot from looking at your own photos sure. and things that you like and things that you don't like and things that you think you can do better and things that you want to change. And so you go through this whole process to develop your technique into what you do. And it takes years and it's a lot of thought. And then to do all of that and then have a faha that's not really participating, not really keeping its end of the bargain, you know, it's mm -hmm. just like generic. It's not really supporting your work and yeah. your design and what you're promising. Yeah, it's not It's not doing what I want What I want to do. And so that's when I'm like, well, why don't I look to see? And it was kind of a big task. I mean, I've never designed something uh, along those lines before. And so it was a bigger task. But... Um, just again with being in Miami and having connections with uh, Columbia, um, you know, I got in touch with Shaper Lynn, which is a, is a really good manufacturer in Columbia. And we just went to work and redesigned the Faja. So I created a lot of compression in the key areas, like four, I'm going to show you. We have a visual aid coming up. I told you I'd show you the Faha. Well, because it's easier to kind of show you. No, I, I, I appreciate the visuals. I'm sure everyone does. Um, it is easier. It, it, it's kind of easier to explain it here. And so, it, so it's not just willy-nilly designed. Like every single part of mm -hmm. this Faha um, was designed with certain, with, with purpose, you know? Oh, it's like a thicker yeah. material. Yeah. This is not thin at all. So this is PowerNet, which... I always say is the greatest material on the planet because it. It's very soft inside, kind of coarse outside, but I. Well, can there's see, multiple like, layers. Oh, yeah, there's are. really soft layers on the inside. It's breathable. It's antimicrobial, um, and it's comfortable. And fajas typically come as one layer, and so the power net's really good, or whatever material they're using. On the outside is good for compression, but it's not necessarily good to be against your skin, mm -hmm. and it can be irritating, and it can lead to burns and, and well, of some course, other having things. to wear it twenty four hours a day for wearing it twenty four seven, right? Hopefully, it's so comfortable. it's nice and soft on the inside, but it has this really good fabric uh, yeah. power net on the outside, and then if I just kind of start from the top down, obviously, I mean, I've never worn a faja. Probably wouldn't but want now to see you're me. going to. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, guys. <laughs> so yeah, that's not happening. But um, you know, we went through a lot of patience and um, trying on the fajas that participated in the design. And so one of the things that you know we changed at the beginning was that this the width of the the strap, the bra strap, it was narrow. the The ones were typically narrow and they were painful. So yeah, these are like a nice, soft, wider strap. They're, they're very adjustable. Um, one of the things you'll find with when you have liposuction or BBL, you're going to be shrinking in size, right? So the natural way the body heals is you start out, you swell, it peaks at three days after surgery. And then over the next three weeks, you get like a pretty big squeeze. Just imagine like a wet uh, face cloth and then you kind of wring it out. That's the first three weeks. So you get like a lot of reduction mm -hmm. in your in the size of your body with the swelling. So, you know, we made more adjustable straps here. So you can start out with a, you know, wider. Oh, I and see. then there's an extra layer. Typically, mm -hmm. they have three. We have put an extra one in here so you can get a little bit more compression. So as you're shrinking, you can go mm -hmm. from four to three to two to one. Is it is when you're making those or a post-op patient, when they're making those adjustments, is it kind of like, OK, at three days, you move to this one at this or is it just whatever feels comfortable? Feels feels right. And or should it be as tight as possible for more pressure? So that's that's good. So it's it's real. I always tell tell patients, listen, make it snug, but mm -hmm. not uncomfortable. Okay. 
You're not, if you don't have really, like, let's say, good liposuction, you're not going to overcome that poor surgical result with a faha. Okay. You're not, you can't just crank down on the faha and then you're going to have a small waist. If you didn't have all the fat removed from that area, your faha is not going to overcome that. The main work is done in the hospital by, in the operating room by removing the fat, but if you've had good liposuction, then you need to treat it properly. And so that's why the fa has to be snug, mm -hmm. but not uncomfortable. And then if we look down low, and one of the problems with the fa is they always roll up. This has got really nice, kind of wider, bigger silicone here. So it prevents roll up down in the thigh, which that's comfortable. Yeah, and it's yeah. comfortable material, it's breathable. But then I think, the real magic for me um, happens right here in the back with this is this key area. And this took quite some time to be able to really sort of determine where the key area is going to be in the garment. I know where it is on the body. Okay. Actually, the first person that I, that how when I started doing this, I had my wife put on a faha and I, and I drew her <laughs> key area. <laughs> She really had no idea that I was even designing the faha, so it was kind of funny. I'm like, <laughs> She's like, what are you doing to me? Yeah. Now? So, um, what I did is I took a big sharpie and I kind of highlighted where this would be, and we sent it to Columbia, and then we went back and forth. The whole process took about 18 months. Okay. To go through, and we they sent a lot of fahas back, and we mm -hmm. tried them on different body types, because this key area here actually has four levels of compression. Remember. This is where I want the greatest compression to be because that's where I'm really, yes, exactly, that concave and convex. So this had to be there. And this is what I can't find anywhere else, you know, mm -hmm. to get this type of thing. And so then. So this is what really makes your design so unique is that it's so this is supporting that work and facilitating. Yes. That shape. Con it's, the OJ, OG line. It, it complements it really, mm -hmm. really well. And then, so if you look here, you've got like really strong compression. Mm -hmm. Now I've added like another layer of compression. It's actually a little bit different material too. Oh, yeah. And so that really hugs through that key area. Not as much compression in the butt because we, that's where I've put the fat. So we don't want like... To smush it. Yes. Because if you look at the fat, what is happening with the fat? Well, we remove it with liposuction. And so technically that fat at that point is not alive because it's not connected to the blood supply anymore. And then we're putting the fat into the butt and we're saying, okay, we want you to now live, but you have to get a new blood supply. So as that blood supply is trying to grow into the fat, if you put too much pressure on it, those fat cells are trying they to, yeah, they, can, they just can't get a blood supply. So this, the compression here in the butt is less. And then I like to put fat into the hips and, and into the right. leg because that's an important part uh, of what I like to do in terms of the shape. And so, again, it's a little bit lighter pressure here. So, in essence, there's more pressure where I've done lipo, extra pressure where I kind of have my key area, and then less pressure in the butt and less pressure in the legs. Mm -hmm. Kind of all done in a very comfortable, antimicrobial more adjustable kind of package. So I will tell you, Gabby, I'm really, really proud of the OG I was going to say, so I've never put this on. This is probably the closest I've been to a Faha. But just from a first glance, you have actually like four or more different materials just looking at this. I mean, and it feels very quality too. So I imagine that. It's really good quality. Shaper Lin is a fantastic company. Um, and OG Faha, the, that's right. The whole point of the project um, was just like for excellence. I mean, I was not going to go through and spend the time and sure. the effort and do all these types of things if we didn't really just do it properly. And it wasn't just me. It wasn't just the, the Shaperlin company that helped me, but it was a, a real project, my whole team, and a lot of patients that tried it on and gave really good feedback. And, and so I've had it on patients of all different uh, ethnicities, all different body shapes, different sizes, and you know, kind of worked out something that was that just kind of really 
delivered excellence. So, so I'm really proud of this, and I'm I'm so looking forward to people wearing this after having surgery. You don't have to have surgery with me. It's not a, you know, this is not um, that type of thing. It's just I wanted to have a good garment yeah. that was specifically designed for its purpose rather mm-hmm. than just repurposing what was already available. Yeah, and that just gets you the, the results that you came for in the first place. Is this um, is this one specific to post-op or can it, it you know, can can it serve other purposes for just shapewear or is this design, this is just for BBL recovery? Yeah, that's a that's super good question. The, um, it's both. Mm-hmm. So obviously I've designed this specifically for recovery, with the, the OG recovery. Um, and the OG Fahas was principal design for that. But we also went through and designed it on, uh, or, or tried it on patients that had not had surgery. Mm-hmm. And just with the compression in the key area, that really helps. Really? Yes. And so it's really nice. And it you, you do look... Patients that have not had BBLs look better with it. Really? I'm going to have to try it on. Yeah, it's really good. Is there a difference in its purpose or how it's worn or how it's used for patients who've had a BBL or versus liposuction versus a tummy tuck? Or is the protocol kind of the same? I would say the protocol is kind of the same. You could wear it a little bit tighter if you wanted to just for shapewear because you haven't had any surgery, so your blood supply has not been disturbed. Mm Mm-hmm. If you've had surgery, you would not want to, you know, crank it down sure. because you just have to be a little bit more careful. Um, but aside from that, no, it's just it it it's about wearing it comfortably, and it can be it can be used for for either either or. But it's specifically designed for surgery. But it turns tends to li- lend itself well to other uses for patients that haven't had it as well. Multi-use faha, we love that. This is a great design. Um, I think right now we should, uh, I've, I mean, I will continue asking questions, but maybe we'll uh, give someone else a chance. Why don't we head on over to social media for our bit where uh, we're going to, I think, check in with TikTok today. Oh, okay. Good. Hey, yeah. TikTok, say what? Okay. Let's hear what she says. All right. So we've got a question from TikTok. It says, is a faha required after a tummy tuck and when, you, and when should you start wearing it after surgery? Okay. I think we kind of answered that a little bit. Well, it's a good. It, it's different with a, with mm-hmm. a tummy tuck, definitely, than it is with having liposuction or having a BBL. Okay. And so with a tummy tuck, I usually will place patients in what's called an abdominal binder. First of all, first off, well, I need to backtrack. Almost all of my tummy tucks have liposuction performed with them. So the most common thing that I do is what's what's when I do a tummy tuck is called a tummy tuck ten meaning a tummy tuck is performed where you remove the skin, you get a new belly button, you tighten the muscle. That's a standard tummy tuck. And then I do liposuction, and it's called 10 because it's 10 areas. It's like lipo 360. It's all around the body. And the tummy tuck will remove the skin, and the liposuction really gets you the shape. Okay. So if you can really shape with the lipo. I mean, lipo is just so powerful for that. So... We don't want you to put a faha on right away. We don't put you in a faha after a tummy tuck 10. Remember, if you have a BBL or lipo, you wake up and you're in a faha. Mm-hmm. That somehow magically got <laughs> placed there. Yeah. And um, But with a tummy tuck, I don't want to have that compression on the abdomen because when a tummy tuck is done, all of that skin and fat is elevated from the abdominal wall. And when you lift all of that up, you have to cut the blood supply. So we're now we're relying on the blood supply coming from the sides and the the back. So you want you want the blood to be able to get there and not yes. have the pressure stopping it, like we would with other things exactly. or with the BBL. Exactly. And so we do want to have compression, but I like to give it at least a week mm. after having the tummy tuck and the liposuction before you get into the garment does it so we said for a bbl this is about three months 24 7 mm-hmm. um what about for a tummy tuck because i guess it's same thing but starting like a week later starting a week later but we still want that compression because of all the liposuction done in the back and the sides oh okay because i still do 
lipo in the key area mm -hmm. if I'm even if I'm not doing a BBL or whatever. It's the same yeah. lipo. So if I'm doing tummy tuck or just lipo or BBL, the liposuction technique is exactly the same. So for any of our listeners who haven't received this from an operation, how would they one go about getting one, and then two, how does size? How do you know if I were just to put this on? How do I know what size I would need? Where to put it? You know, if it was being used just for shapewear, for example. Yeah. So the the sizing is. Um, it, it's tricky to come out with a garment that has kind of a universal I think that's with anything yes. size right women so, know <laughs> so there's and and I can it's probably better just to there there's videos and all types of things instructional guides that we you know created to explain to patients so on the packaging on my website and Instagram and things mm -hmm. like that there's like QR codes where you can look and there's videos explaining how the best way is to size this to pick the size because some sometimes you have to choose between your hips and your waist and what the purpose is for mm -hmm. the garment and so you can if you watch a video it'll kind of go through some of that explanation as to you know how to pick out the perfect size for you um and you know remember with post-operatively patients will start out being a lot bigger and then they, as the swelling comes down, they mm -hmm. need to fall. So, you know, somebody who's had a significant change, it's they're going to overcome just having the four levels of variability here for the hooks, and they're probably going to need to get a smaller faha. Okay. In terms of shapewear, that's easy because it's just, you know, once you find your size, then that's just the size that you're going to wear and your, your body's not going to be changing. Obviously, you haven't had surgery. So, but I, you know, that was a big consideration when designing this is how are we going to get the patients, the people that want to wear this the right size? And so that's why we kind of took some time and effort to really sort of figure that out and then made a video explaining that. Very nice. Does it come in other colors? Uh, it does not. Oh, maybe one day you can start customizing it. Like <laughs> but the, the car. but it does come with sleeves, so that's oh, okay. Important. That's good to know. Yeah. So, um, you know, and that was based on some of the early feedback we mm -hmm. had. Um, particular patients have like arm liposuction. Oh, then yeah. it's it's there for that, and it can also be more comfortable for some people. Prefer that as opposed to the sleeves. And it has a different bra kind of mm -hmm. um, lining that will help patients, uh, you know, fit more comfortably there. So there's there's two models of it: one with sleeves, one without sleeves. But in general, you don't need someone else to uh, like put this on for you. You're able to put it on yourself. No. I mean, yeah. At first, which we I think we've talked about in another episode, you will have your caregiver right helping you with everything, all the leaking and all of the buttoning and fastening yeah, here. Yeah, that you at the beginning, if you're you know just a couple of days after surgery, then I, you me need having help. no surgery, this is a lot of work. <laughs> like there's a lot to fasten, so yeah, I think the, having it, help at first is definitely necessary. Yeah, I mean it, these are you know these these are real garments like yeah this no is, the quality of the material here is yeah so it's it's not like just putting on a pair of slacks or something There's, yeah no yeah it, it takes a little bit of effort but it's it's really nice it's breathable mm -hmm. um and and really <laughs> after my wife went through all of the uh marking of the key area and things like that she's like well she liked the way she looked in it and <laughs> she's like well i need one of these i'm like all right well let's get them made first and then <laughs> So they're, they're really good for both, either no, post-surgical or shaping. Uh, especially, um, it's great that it's so breathable because in South Florida, yeah, it's, it's a lot hot. of sweating. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. of hot, a lot of heat. Yeah. So maybe this is just the whole outfit you wear for the day. Um, any other parts of the OG Faha that we haven't covered? Well, the only other part, but it's just, it, I, I don't want to get into a lot of detail, but let's just say down in this area here. Oh, yeah. Here. It's practical. It's convenient. We've got a little opening here. Because, I mean, let me, girls, if you've ever worn a bodysuit, they're the bane of my existence. Going to the bathroom is such a task, not having had surgery. So I see there's a feature here to make that activity so much easier. Yeah. You have a little and opening. That, that was all based on, you know, patients wearing them. Yeah, no, absolutely. There's hooks and there's flies mm -hmm. and there's different things. But I think this is a nice kind of hygienic easy way um, to be able to wear the faha and not have to take everything off in order to use the bathroom. Yeah, I think we'll maybe uh, try to put uh, maybe another video together. Maybe I'll be the one to get in the faha, do a little walkthrough of it. 
Oh yeah. This but is... no, this is a really quality item. You can tell. I, I know you guys can't feel it, so I'll feel it on your behalf. <laughs> no, I'm 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 really proud of it. I'm re- I'm really I'm just. I'm happy that um, it's kind of here just because it's been such a long time working on it. And there's certainly like, I'm proud of it. I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. And, and so I just, you know, I, I hope that patients can use them and, and enjoy them and get the benefit from them. Yeah. And, and you don't even have to be one of your patients or a patient because no, no, there is matter. the shaper yeah, of aspect course. of this mm-hmm. as well, or just that additional support. Um, beyond those th- three months, uh, when they're wearing it 24 seven, is it then they can just stop wearing it or do you have to gradually kind of move away from wearing the Faha? So, I mean, I, I think patients probably naturally gr- just mm-hmm. gradually, you know, don't want to keep putting it on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, they, and they'll, they'll, they'll do that. But then there is a whole group of patients that really stay in it longer than the three months. Why is that? For comfort. So what they tell me is that when they take the faha off, they start to feel almost like they're sort of swelling or they're, mm-hmm. yeah. So it, I definitely have patients that wear the garments for, you know, longer mm-hmm. periods of time just because it feels comfortable. Yeah, that hug is always with you. Well, I mean, sur- when you recover from surgery, any type of surgery at all, um, it takes about a year for your body to completely heal and soften. Mm-hmm. And so it makes sense to me why, you know, we kind of say, hey, you should wear this for three months because I think it's going to provide you benefit for that three months. But I see why people want to wear it longer and because it's still helping them. And they may not realize that, oh, this is why I want to wear it because I'm still healing. But that's probably why they are wearing it because it's still comfortable as you're healing for that whole first year. Is there any negatives to wearing it beyond that or just wearing it too much? No. There's oh, not. There's nothing okay. that it's gonna. It's gonna harm or do. Nothing to the fat cells. There, you can breathe Mm-mm. and move about the cabin mm-hmm. just fine. Yes. Great. That's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing this with us, guys. Whenever you, um, whether you've had your BBL or your plastic surgery or not, you can check out the OG Faha right here. It's gorgeous. Great quality and it's something you absolutely should be proud of. I don't. Wouldn't even know where to begin designing something. Let go. Let alone for it to be of medical grade for you know. A procedure, people's bodies. Yeah, no, it's 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 wonderful. I love it. No, it is great. Well, you know what, the Faha, I think we're gonna keep her on the table for the best part of the day. Ah, the wheel. <laughs> the wheel, guys. It's time for the OG wheel. OG. Let's just all sit back and admire her. Well, if you don't know, then now you know. If you know, you know. Ooh, what are you hoping we're gonna get today? Uh, I don't know. I like them all. I guess I'm open for the two hundred fifty dollars. I was thinking that giveaway one too. Yeah, because, just... yeah, that's not gonna involve me dancing or anything. <laughs> and, and we it's want good. you guys to get money. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of hoping for the TikTok, but that's just because I want to be entertained by you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All, All right, right let's go. here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, ah, wow. Gabby. Look TikTok. at that, I manifested it. No, 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 I just attracted it to us. Um, I don't right. know what TikTok well, we're going to do. I watch right? a lot of TikTok. You might watch more than I do. I probably do. Oh, so then maybe you should be running. Oh, this is a great song. I know all these songs. I know, I know that, like, I recognize the dances uh-huh. that they do. Show us. But show I cannot us. do be, them. Don't be shy. Just show us. No, I, I really, I, I needed, don't know how to do them. But I do, I've learned so much on TikTok. I'm going to go find our TikTok now. All right. So what, what, how does this work then? What, what, uh, who So we're going to, we're going to, our gorgeous team is helping us with this. So here's the TikTok we're going to do. <laughs> this one's fun. We're just going to recreate it, basically, as okay. best as we can. All right. So, okay, so I have our TikTok we're yes. going to recreate today. Yes. Are you ready to see it? You know, I'm not nervous at all during surgery. <laughs> this makes me nervous. <laughs> That's how I feel on first dates, remember? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this is going to be uh, teamwork okay. together, me and you. We're going right. to do this, okay? Oh, wait, you know what? I'm, I'm going to rely I'm gonna get the more volume heavily in. on you. Well, I'm going to be the arms. Oh, there's two people here? Yeah, you're going to be the facials. You got to sell it. You really have to sell it. In oh, the this face is muscle. cool. Yeah. I like this one, actually. And I'll be your arms. 
And <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't know that choreography. So you're the pink. I'm the pink. All right, we got it. I don't. That, okay, the, but how are we going to do this? So we're sitting down. No, we're going to we're going to stand oh, here. No. We're going to move the chair. We're going to stand here. The no, you know, and you're wearing the perfect top for this. It's very flattering. I like the colors. We're going to do it. It's going to be fantastic. Oh wait, can so, right, so I you're can going to be on, putting yeah, your arms through through your arms. I'm going to be your arms. Oh, and, I'm so much louder when I don't have those. But on. what is the thing? Um, but what am I doing with my face? You're you're whatever you want. You have to, that's, it's improv. You, you have, have to respond. To make the face. You have to respond to what I'm doing with my hands. Ah, uh, okay. So if you're scratching me, then I'm like this or something. Yeah. Okay. Whatever it is. We'll see. Where am I looking? Oh, it's like a... I didn't realize I'm doing the Macarena. <laughs> <laughs> so we <laughs> guys just don't come for me on the choreography i um obviously made it my own shout out to the macarena coming in clutch there yeah <laughs> i think it i think it was great was i hope good. i hope we land on tiktok more to I make those just, videos i don't know at i think your lily or oscar fucked this little thing up and they got some little control here <laughs> maybe that is what it is are there two tiktok things one yeah i think there's two of each oh okay. uh but one money Two of the rest. Oh, okay. I got you. Isn't that how it goes? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, guys, go like, subscribe, follow, comment, and also go to TikTok, like, subscribe, comment, follow on that too. Make yeah, it go let viral. Me, let me say one thing about the comments. Um, on uh, YouTube and Instagram and TikTok, uh, comments are really helpful because that's how I get feedback mm -hmm. from what people want to know and what questions people want answers to and it helps to come up with topics too yeah so, it gives us bits for the show yeah <laughs> your so questions. questions we want to answer your questions yeah. yeah so please by all means leave a comment and happy to answer it yeah we're here for fun and to educate so whatever you want to know we're gonna get this guy to answer it for you <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like subscribe follow check it out um hang out with us next episode all that fun stuff dr william Thanks. Ah, uh, that was fun. It's Thanks, been real. Gabby. It's been fun. It's been really fun. Ah, uh, thank you. We'll great. till You're next time, experience. and we'll yeah. see you guys on the next Behind episode. The Thanks bye for bye. hanging out with the us. Podcast. podcast.